way to 12 midday. But to give you a breakdown of what to expect, the newspaper review, what is making headlines on the dailies, and we'll also check on what's trending on social media, especially on Twitter. Uh, not forgetting from 10 to 11 a.m., it's all about health today. Simba, so much lined up for business from 11 to 12 noon. Is that correct? Pretty much. In fact, very, very interesting is that a KQ is still making losses up to now. By the way, the last time KQ made any money was in 20. 12. Since then, they have been in the bread. Now, the half-year results indicate that they are at 9.8 billion shillings in losses. And by the way, Anki, somebody said, probably, Simba, people just don't understand what a billion is. So let me just make it clear. Now, you see, a billion is one million, a million of those millions. Now, KQ then is on a negative of that times nine, 9.8 billion. Oof. That is so much money that they're losing. But guess what? I'll be telling you exactly what that is later on, <laughs> on a look up business right here on a look up TV. Exactly, and I um, can't wait to hear as well what you have for us besides that uh, when we actually get to look at business. But for now, we take a very short breather. We come in with the dailies. You want to know what is making headlines on the dailies this morning. We'll be right back. All right, you know, as was, as is, usually you get most of the information of what is happening, developments of events that occurred previously, the previous day, most of these things, you catch them on your dailies. Now, we want to take a look at what's happening on the newspaper review this morning. And like we mentioned earlier on, it's a new dawn for the counties as we're looking forward to the swearing in as is constitutional in this country. Now, I'm going to pick on the standard theme, but what do you have with you? I do have uh, the Daily Nation and uh, I do see William Ruto um, being headlined there. And this is what they're saying, that going for last of the moist. Now, this is what they're saying. Mm. It's a very, very interesting headline. And I think you have to grab the Daily Nation for you to see exactly what that story is about. They're saying President-elect William Ruto has waged a bruising battle against uh, the Moy dynasty snatching oh. the Rift Valley political mantle from the former president and in the recent elections kicking out Gideon from the Baringo Senate seat. Now he has his guns trained on Raymond in the Bongai members of parliament elections that we expect mm -hmm. to go down Monday. Quite mm -hmm. interesting really when you look at this particular headline and to sort of picking from where uh, we left it Anki because yes. indeed when you look at exactly what Bruto has been doing quite ingenious by the way he revealed just the other day that the UDM party that had um, seven members of parliament was his own creation. Mm -hmm. Just the handshake that we saw wasn't UDM, according to him, wasn't just um, a new party. It is the one who had created it, fronted it in areas where it deemed battlegrounds, got represent representatives, and then later on told them, Your guys, come home. Mm -hmm. Let's form the majority. Quite interesting for you um, mm -hmm. on that particular one. It's, it's a good one that you you got to grab the Daily Nation so you read on it. Well, you pick on what political analysts say about Ruto now, the president-elect, the year 2022, most of them terming him as one smart politician. Mm -hmm. However, I don't know what you think of that as well. Let us know in the comment section as we are live right now on Facebook. But what I'm looking at on the standard, if I would just pick, uh, you know, the front page, New Dawn for counties, swearing in, and I'll just read a bit of that. It was an election of surprises, that's what they say, where governors elect defied the odds to win. It was also a victory for women. And of course, I continue to read, it says, as county chiefs take their oaths, they must be acutely aware that they will shape the next devolution decade by their plans and actions. And I must say, most of this information is on page two, three, 
four and six, and that's really exhaustive, uh, exhaustive as far as that you know is concerned. Being a very big day for devolution as well, and I'm seeing photos of Gladys Wanga, uh, you know Cecily Mbarire. I'm seeing Anwai Guru, Susan Kihika, James Orengo, Wavinya Ndeti, quite a number, of course, Johnson Sakaja and Mutula Kilonzo Jr. among all you know the other faces on the front page right here but of course if i read also there's a headline on what is going on right now the supreme court yes. as far as they just concluded general elections are concerned Raila versus chebukati now that's the new headline we really evolved from a lot of someone versus someone including the face off between ruto and uhuru and now at this point in time we're seeing Raila versus chebukati even on social media but on this particular page we're seeing as a leader now wants the independent Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IABC chairman, to disqualify himself from Monday's elections, even as Chebukati shot back saying, governor elections are conducted by returning officers. Quite, um, you know, a system here, you know, people questioning if then do we want Chebukati out right now? Is Azimio leader, Raila Odinga, right to actually, you know, have such demands? You get more of that on page seven and page eight of the standard. We really don't know how it's gonna go yet, Simba. But it seems like the task or, or the war mm -hmm. <laughs> between IEBC and uh, Azimio, um, my, I don't know, it's, it's already at the Supreme Court. Perhaps we get to see how things turn out with these two parties. What is that? Um, still on the sum, a brief on how a sample of uh, Forms 34 is also revealed that there, have been, uh, that there were errors in the presidential tally as well. Quite an interesting one. And if you look at um, now what uh, Raila is uh, getting ready with, Raila mm -hmm. actually has a 42-member legal team. Mm -hmm. Where? 42. And, and did you hear him say? Talk about serious, eh? Did you hear him <laughs> say, "I am not shaken this time. I am not afraid." He continuously says mm -hmm. he is very confident, and also says they have gathered enough evidence, the kind of strength that Azimio leader has now during his process and when he goes somewhere to speak. Quite interesting, um, you know, he is very confident, seems very confident, but on this particular petition this time, we get to hear then. But of course, uh, on Thursday, uh, we're also seeing here governors who lost seats in 2017 back with a bang. Quite interesting, on page three of the standard, we're seeing, you know, uh, Simon Kachapin of West Pokot, Ken Lusaka Bungoma, Joshua Irungu Laikipia, Julius Malombe of Kitui, Benjamin Cheboy of Baringo, Ahmed Abdullahi of I must just say congratulations are in order. That's what it is, isn't it? As we wait for them then to get uh, sworn into office today. Absolutely. For now, we take a short break. Once we come back, what are you talking about as far as Kenyan matters are concerned?
All right, welcome back. Thank you very much for choosing to stay with us. Simba, you seem ready for this one. And of course, today I'm not seeing anything trending on matters football. Yeah, Simba. Oh, yeah? I know you're waiting for what's trending, but I'm not seeing anything major on football because I know that always lights up your morning before we get into the tough political, you know, things happening on the, you know, Twitter handles. Is it? No, um, today. There could be a lot of that is could be trending. Um, <laughs> I think majority of the trends uh, are just going to be around um, what has been happening around the country. Now we yes. do know we're waiting for the swearing in of the 40... Five 45, by that's, the way. that's um, accurate. Save for the two. That is for the Kakamega and Mombasa County uh, yes. governors who are yes. still waiting for that election. On They're Monday. waiting for IEBC to conduct on Monday. But they, on that particular one, IEBC did say, well, Fulache Bukati is not involved in that election. So they said they can actually go on despite uh, the particular petitions that are that are right now at the Supreme Court mm -hmm. accusing Wafula, Wafula, sorry, Chebukati. They were very clear. They said, guys, listen, those one can go on. Mm. We are not part, Wafula Chebukati is not party um, to whatever is going to go on the ground. So we're waiting to see exactly what um, um, the, the yes. results are going to be like on yes. a Monday, isn't it? And by the way, Magoha also did say that, by the way, thank you, I've got to ask you. <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. I, I gotta ask you, I gotta ask you this question. Because he said, uh, we're going to come up with a way where we're not going to interfere with the learning processes in this particular counties where the elections are gonna be held, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. But then later on, there's an announcement that came that schools might be closed in uh, Mombasa and Kakamega County just to allow for those elections to go back to go on on uh, Monday. Isn't that predictable? I mean, I, I'm just talking about how it's been, the patterns that we have seen, ah. some of these being polling stations. This yeah. is pretty much, you know, when this happened first, when Magoha called in for the closure of schools indefinitely at that time, when we were just about to begin, uh, you know, the elections, the 9th of August elections, people felt he, um, he acted a bit uh, irrationally, which he had to apologize about. He also talked about uh, reopening schools on the 11th of August, which people also felt from the past historic patterns wasn't as realistic and surely mm -hmm. and true he had to postpone this over and over again to the 15th and then to the 18th practically most kenyans would say if you're a kenyan living in kenya who has actually witnessed and have been part of the voting process you might want to consider uh you know uh, the education system in those particular respective counties maybe things are changing uh, maybe they might not have to close them but what have what has been what we have seen is that mostly um they are closed but let's see maybe magoha really knows what they're doing as the ministry of education uh in conjunction with um iebc on this one but Simba, if I go into what, of course, is still trending on uh, Twitter, I'm yes. seeing First Lady trending, and you want to know how interesting this is, Simba. Isn't it Ida Odenga was celebrating a lot there? <laughs> yes. Did you see that TPT photo? Yeah, that's that's where, which one? The one when... Of um, Odinga and Ida, yeah, way, and they're way, on their wedding, I think, way, or way, something, when they were young, yeah, you know, in yeah. love. Yeah, wait, wait, they, they don't have to be love. <laughs> so, it was a beautiful picture and now people came on then, to social media calling her the first lady um you know and also as that happens we're also seeing um you know international news as far as the first lady uh you know trends is concerned uh, we have a breaking news from newsmax you know an, an international you know handle saying um jill biden has tested positive for covid 19 again in an apparent rebound case after she initially tested negative for the virus over the weekend. Now, this is just Kenyans riding and everyone else riding on the first lady you know, handle. But if you go closer now, you'll understand that people are also, you know, using the who is your first lady now uh, as uh, something on Twitter. They're putting Rachel, uh, you know, Ruto there against Ida. And now people have to either choose and retweet and love who is their first lady. But really, don't you think it's quite interesting what Kenyans are doing, even as this case is in court? You know? it? Because they're, they're already calling a first lady, isn't it? Yes. Huh? However, Honorable Toto Lynette um, <laughs> and, and many other people are, are just, you know, trying to make this, I don't, it's, 
two, 20 hours ago, I picked this by Osaka Mbea. Osaka Mbea on Twitter has he really highlighted an emotional picture there of, uh, you know, um, Rachel Ruto. I think this was one of those things she goes to. And she's, there's a picture of Rachel Ruto there, you know, wiping out tears of a young schoolboy and giving a beautiful, uh, you know, hug there as any mother would do. And of course, Osaka Mbea saying our first lady on that particular picture. Gladys Rono, and it seems like Kenyans are now, you know, already calling Rachel the first lady already crowned her, even as we are having president-elect yet to be sworn in. Uh, we're seeing Gladys Rono also saying, first lady, prayerful, warrior, ever smiling. Just pictures of, uh, you know, Rachel Ruto there, Justo Baraka. Uh, also on Twitter, it's, it's, it's like a silent war, Simba, <laughs> on Twitter. Just to Baraka saying, happy birthday, first lady, just a matter of time, God is supreme. That is now a picture of Ida. So you really want to ask yourself, who is the first lady uh, on Twitter this few hours ago into today, Simba? What are your thoughts of what's going on with the first lady now trending on, you know, in Kenyan politics on Twitter? They, they, they have to wait for the decision from the Supreme, <laughs> yes. for the Supreme Court yeah, <laughs> in the next couple of days before you... But, but she's been... The you know, first lady could be an inference really to them recognizing that Vila Tunakwanga na Baba Pia Tukona Mama Sindio. So the Mama tag then would uh, make a first lady because they essentially that, they, you know, it's... Mm. Kenyans, they, Are they, you they trying to be philosophical? You can go about it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's first lady in... Who? Who is first lady? Whoever you pick. <laughs> yeah. Depending, depending, depending on where you're, where you're understanding from. But, yeah, yeah she's first lady. Come up to Kona Baba, to Kona Mama. The same, same way. Um, now, majority of Kenyans would look at her racial brutal and say, well, she's a first lady, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because she represents our side. Mm -hmm. If you like to put it like that. Yes. Yeah, so quite... You, you, you mm -hmm. say Simba Arati is trending? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Simba, the, um, Simba. That's it. Simba Arati is trending. Simba, how, how, how did that sound? Simba, that, that, <laughs> Simba Arati is trending. I have to do that over that and over the, again. That is the incoming governor for oh, yes. Kisi County. Yeah. Simba, How's that? how are you feeling? No, it's, uh, that's not my count. All right, sorry. So now <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pick a tweet here uh, yeah. as far as Simba Arati trends are, is mm -hmm. concerned. And yeah. um, Kenyans, Kenyans.co.ke, allow me to just, you know, bring out what they're saying on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Simba Arati explains why he slashed the inauguration budget of 57 million Kenyan shillings to 3.5 million Kenyan shillings. And I know Kenyans are saying these are the kind of you people know, that want. It's, <laughs> but, but, like, can I, I'm allowed to clap. Mm. That's the, I don't that's, know how loud that is on let, TV. Listen, that's, that's the way it's supposed to be, by the way. Wait, it slashed it from 57.6 to 3. That's, that's what it says, but that's, that's huge. That's isn't the that? way it's supposed to be. I mean, lead from the front, because I don't understand why we have to spend so much in swearing this governor. Like, there has to be a ceremony. Why? Why? Uh, why? You don't Anki, celebrate you, your graduation, you Simba? You don't, no. you don't celebrate why? your next levels? No. You don't, you don't... I mean get to work. This county needs so much. But that's yeah? true. They yeah, just get to work. Well. Because I don't understand what we spend, what, 57 million? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Imagine how many doors uh, that can buy for majority of the schools in the county. I know. That's, I, that? and, and, and so students don't have to sit, uh, you know, on stones. And let me just read on the picture they highlighted yeah. so that we're a bit more specific. The budget set aside for the assumption of office was 57 million. Mm -hmm. And that's what he actually said. I have slashed it to 3.5 million Kenyan shillings. I cannot spend 57 million Kenyan shillings when hospitals and right. dispensaries in the county have no medicine mm -hmm. and the residents of Kisi do not have water. That's the what supposed to an be. incoming leader. But that's, that's it. I mean, it needs, what can we get him? Nothing. <laughs> Just claps are enough, by the way. That's, that's how it's supposed to be because I don't understand. Because a ceremony, I mean, the best it can be, by the way, it's just too cold to, to mm. call a couple of uh, guys to come in and mm. um, give you the, you know, just to officiate it. And then mm. after that, guys say, okay, this is it. I'm, <laughs> I'm in office. I don't understand why we've got to hold, you know, those huge ceremonies just to get you in the office. Thank you very much. Simba, I, I know. Come, we're... In, come <laughs> in, Takwa Evo. Then 
we, we support you all the way. Great. Yeah. And I know we're running out of time, but allow me to read this tweet by the real Combedo Michael yeah. at Mike Combedo's, and he's pretty much speaking your language. Um, I'll read it just as it is. It's on Twitter, the real Combedo Michael saying, at a 57 million budget for only carrying a Bible, Mm. Why should my swearing in ceremony that only needs a high court judge, Bible, and a few witnesses cost that much? Let it be less than five million. We've long, uh, we've a long way to go as far as development is concerned in Kisi. You know, quote unquote, saying those were the exact words of Simba Arati, and quite interesting saying. Just to carry a Bible, I don't need fifty-seven million shillings, and that is why. That's the main reason why Simba Arati is now trending on. Uh, on uh, social media this morning. I actually want to commend him. I, I feel keep, like a, he, a lot like of that. governors and leaders coming into power, including the president that the Supreme Court finally gets to make the decision on, will emulate this particular kind of leadership. I remember people saying we just don't need politicians, we need managers and leaders as well. <laughs> Simba, I think we should close it that way, perhaps. Pretty much. Now we take a short break here on a look up some morning adrift. Once we come back, go straight to the newsroom and see exactly what headlines are taking center stage. Remember, you can um, be part and parcel of this conversation. I look up TV across all your social media platforms. We come back.
Welcome back. You are still watching The Morning Drift. My name is Simba. Elijah Charles King again. Let's cross into the newsroom and see what headlines that you are waking up to this morning. Now, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, RABC, has insisted that the disputed presidential election was conducted within the parameters of the law. While submitting both manual and electronic results, declaration forms as directed by the Supreme Court yesterday, the Commission says it has nothing to hide, inviting the court to make its own independent findings. Our reporter, Hombre Tender, with a story. <laughs> On Wednesday, IEBC commissioners led by CEO Majan Hussein Majan arrived at the Milimani Law Courts to submit documents as directed by the courts in a presidential election results dispute pitting the commission against Azmio One Kenya presidential candidate Raila Odinga. The polls agency arriving with all forms 34A, 34B, 34C and 34D in both physical and electronic formats. These are the forms that were used by the Commission to tally and declare results at polling stations, constituency and national tallying centers. The forms are the genesis of a rejected presidential results as declared by IEBC National Returning Officer Wafula Chebukati. After successfully filing the documents with the Supreme Court Registry, IEBC commissioners led by Majan Hussein Majan have reiterated their stand that the law was fallen to the latter in conducting the August 9th elections. Election is a very regulated process. We have followed the election law to the letter. We are very confident that there is, there is no uh, any violation of any procedures, rules or regulation. But that is why we have caught. It is caught to determine. The commission, moreover, says it has nothing to hide and has invited the courts to make their own independent findings on whether or not the exercise was mad with malpractices. And certified copies of Form 34B, and certified copy of Form 34C, and Form 34D. Those are the things we have submitted and uh, actually received by court. Now it is in court custody, so we are done with our obligation of submitting those election materials to the court as per the court. In the prayers before the Supreme Court, the ASMIO team had requested that the electoral agency provides all the forms within 48 hours of filing their case as the cornerstone of their evidence. ASMIO began remaining convinced the forms contain noticeable errors that are crucial in their quest to overturn the decision of IEBC Chair Wafula Chebukati. The hearing of the petition officially kicks off on Tuesday next week with the final judgment expected on 5th of September this year. IEBC has officially submitted documents as required by law in a petition pitting it against ASMIO leader Raila Odinga. Now the burden of proof is on ASMIO's legal team to show there were serious electoral malpractices that interfered with the election. Henry Tende, Look Up TV, Nairobi. Henry Tende. As the Mio Moja presidential flag bearer Raila Odinga has asked the RABC chairman Bafula Chibukati to disqualify himself from overseeing the upcoming Mombasa and Kakamega gubernatorial elections. Speaking in Mombasa County, where he drummed up support for Mombasa's uh, Azimio gubernatorial candidate, Abdul Somad Nasser, Odinga maintained that he won the August 9th election. Shandra Kabiria reports. For the first time since the announcement of the presidential results, the Azmio One Kenya presidential candidate Trailer Odinga has appeared on a campaign trail in Mombasa County to drum up support for Mombasa gubernatorial candidate Abdul Somad Nasir. Odinga used the platform to share his expectation to the Supreme Court, asking the Apex Court to declare him as the presidential winner in the August general polls. In a rejoinder, 
is running mate Martha Karua stated that the Azimio team won the election, but they were denied victory. Tu ambaye hachoki kutetea wa Kenya. Kama ni mtu wa kawaida, yale amepitia angesema wacha ikae. Lakini hachoki kutafuta haki ya mkenya. The Azimio think tanks took swipe at the IBC chairperson of Fula Chebukati alleging that he is not capacitated to conduct Mombasa and Kakamega mini-elections. Odinga now won the IBC vice chairperson Juliana Cherera to conduct the election. Tunasema hizi uchaguzi itapanyo panywa chini usuamizi ya naibu wa chairman ya IBC. Bwana, bwana Chebukati, kama mshakiwa, I disqualify himself. I want It is a statement that the IBC immediately thwarted through its Twitter account, saying that Odinga is out of order, that the IBC will not take part in the Mombasa elections, which again raises eyebrows on who exactly is general overseer of the election in the country. Nini watu wa Kakamega mlifanyiwa njama kubwa sana. Lakini nyinyi wenyewe hamkuwa hamna makosa. Nyinyi vile vile hamkuwa nyinyi mlengwa. Kakamega na Mombasa ilengwa kwa sababu ya baba na Martha huyu. Shadra Kareria Look Up TV. The candidates for Kakamega and Mombasa gubernatorial elections, Cleofas Malala and Omar Hassan, have intensified their bids to win the two seats. The elections are slated for 29th August. Now, the candidates have urged their supporters to come out in large numbers to vote for them. With only five days to the mini gubernatorial elections in Kakamega and Mombasa counties, Candidates have put the best foot forward, campaigning to be the next county bosses. In Kakamega County, ANC candidate rolling on Kenya Kwanzaa flag, Cleophas Malala, has expressed doubt with the IBC officials mandated to conduct the elections. Mnavyojua kwamba tuko na uchaguzi tarehe 29 mwezi wa nane na ningependa kuambia wale wafuasi wetu kwamba tuko tayari tumejitayarisha vilivyo kwa uchaguzi huo wasiwe na shaka tunaahimiza tu watu wetu waende wapige kura tuko na mikakati ya kutosha ya kulinda kura yetu kuna watu ambao wako na dhana kwamba kura yetu inaweza ibiwa ningependa kuambia hakuna kura yetu itaibiwa hata moja tumeweka mikakati katika kila polling station kuhakikisha kwamba ile kura ambayo unaenda kupiga kama mfuasi wangu inaenda kuchungwa vilivyo on his part, Kakamega returning officer Joseph Ayata has assured residents of a free and fair elections and that the commission is prepared for the elections. Tarakisha kama POs, kwa POs again on 29th, I can assure you there will be so many changes. Yeah, The people that uh, they think they were POs may find themselves not POs at all. They may find themselves not, not working at all. Some of them are because all of them are trained. Yeah, so we'll just do refresh a training for all of them and they know what they're doing. Meanwhile, Kenya Kwanza Alliance has continued with their campaigns for the Mombasa gubernatorial seat while receiving defectors from various political parties who joined to campaign for UDA candidate Hassan Omar. Hassan Omar and his running mate Selina Maida have urged their supporters to come in big numbers and vote for them while promising to curb plans to disrupt peace during the elections. The part of Afuasi wengi sana kutoka vile vyama pinzani, yale mirengo pinzani, ambao wamekuja kushirikiana na sisi, manake mwenye zimgu katika kuahirisha huu chaguzi. Ime, imechomoza ni nani maadui wa hii county na ule mtazamo na msimamo watu anataka kuchukua ili kuhakikisha maadui wa hao huu county pamewekwa kikomo cha full stop. Wanaishi wa Mombasa. 
tunawaomba tushirikiane na nyi tarehe 29 ili kuleta hadhi ya Mombasa mikononi mwetu tena Mombasa ni yetu sote tunahitaji hii Mombasa tuirudishe kwa hali inayofaa ikiwa ni Mombasa ni kaunti ya kwanza katika Kenya hii tunataka tushirikiane na wewe tuifanye kaunti ya kwanza kwa kuboresha maendeleo katika hii kaunti Edin John Mukora Look Up TV as the government prepares to start operations ahead of the Supreme Court hearing, political and uh, party realignments are taking center stage with William Ruto receiving elected members of parliament who are defecting from their Zimio coalition as he seeks to have majority in both houses. Look up TV's Bran Amoy with that story. Defections in the political arena are not something new. They happen almost every minute as elected members traverse the corridors of different political parties in search of political survival. President-elect William Ruto recently received a number of independent and UDM party members to add to his Kenya Kwanzaa side, all in search of the majority in parliament. Did the move come too soon, or is it a political tactic from a student of former President Daniel Arap Moi that seeks to emasculate what will be the opposition? We sit down with governance expert and political analyst Kevin Osido. And if you look at uh, the numbers, already um, what we see is that UDA more or less has uh, about four members of parliament up higher than Azimula or Mojawan Kenya Alliance. So the DP's part is also interested in ensuring that certain positions are captured. For example, the speaker position is a position that calls for members to lobby and members to be able to vote for the person that is presented by the ruling party. And so in this case, it looks like uh, the deputy president is already arming up to also whip up the members of Azimio and maybe to boost his number. Ruto's move has, however, been termed as a disregard of the law by the Azimio running mate Martha Karua since the UDM party members are linked to Azimio by law following their pre-election agreement. Of what consequences then will their actions amount to? To be honest with you, I uh, will say nothing. Because uh, this kind of precedence has been set by the 11th parliament, that is Jubilee 2013, and also the 12th parliament, that is Jubilee, and also ODM. And what the law says, the Political Parties Act, is that any member who uh, proscribes and campaigns and advocates for the policies of another member automatically is deregistered and in fact what should happen is that the speaker is supposed to deregister them and declare those constituencies uh, vacant and a by-election is called. If you were to do that, you would probably see the entire country having a by-election. An election would have actually come four years before the 2022 elections, that is 2018. Should Ruto be sworn in as president, what then will be the place of the opposition in his government? In fact, the, th the 12th parliament did very uh, dismally, performed very dismally because of what you are raising, where the Jubilee party more or less took over the, the, one of the three arms of government, which is basically the legislature. And we do not see very progressive laws that were passed by the 12th parliament that did not really uh, have either legislative interference or did not get to the level of the judiciary. So if you talk about the security amendments uh, bill, it went to the judiciary level. Defectors have been warned by the Azmio coalition with the Jubilee party issuing a statement saying those seeking to defect risk losing their seats. But the question remains, why they need to align with the government and what happens to those who don't? With Ruto's latest harvest, the president-elect now has a majority in parliament against Azimio. In the Senate, the DP controls the majority against Azimio. Be worry on whether there will be substantive debates in parliament if a government has majority in both houses is a subject of debate. But based on history of the previous parliaments, there is fear that a weak opposition and a government that has a majority in both houses would mean laws that might be in favor of the government and subjective to the people will pass without much question giving the government a ride in the park. The speakers and the leadership of the assemblies also need to help Kenyans because uh, if we do not have uh, people following the law or we have this this enhanced mechanism of impunity within the legislature or parliament 
then even the quality of the laws that are passed are going to be compromised. The move to have majority in parliament, both at the national and county level, is however also necessitated by the fear of impeachment motion on the president or the governor. Brian Amuai, Look Up TV, Nairobi. Bwana Mwai with that story. Jubilee Party Secretary General Jeremiah Keoning has dismissed William Ruto's win as a president-elect in the August 9th polls, especially in the Mount Kenya region. Kioni has termed the win as a result of people rigging and a lack of transparency and fairness. As he highlighted, the Jubilee Party agents were denied the right to access polling stations and monitor the election process. Hereby declares that yeah. Ruto William Samoe. Just slightly over a week after William Ruto was declared president elect by the IBC chair of Fula Chibukati, rigging accusations are progressively erupting from the Azimio Brigade, the most recent one being that of Jubilee Secretary General's utterances claiming that William Ruto, in conjunction with his party members, unfairly won the general elections. Sehemu ambazo zili tumetoka kupiga uchaguzi tarehe tisa. Na sehemu ambazo zinaito Mount Kenya na sana sana zili ambao zina wakikuyo idadi kubwa kuliko kwekineko, wakuna uchaguzi urifanyika. Na pia, wao pia wanachaga ni kwa nini ballot boxes zilikuwa zinaonekana zimeja tagu walipoingia paka muisho. In his scuffing address, Kioni stated that the voter turnout in Mount Kenya was too low to support Ruto's win in the area, even as he mentioned that there was voter bribery, hence the data supporting Ruto's win is sheer theft and propaganda. Idadi ya wale ambao walitokea kupiga kula haikufika ile ambao tunabiwa na IBC, sijui 50% ama 60%. Ama <laughs> In addition, the Jubilee Secretary General has insisted that Azimir's presidential candidate Raila Odinga is the people's winner for the claiming that nepotism at the constituency level among people allied to William Ruto and corruption largely contributed to Ruto's win in the August 9th polls. Tumepata kujua kwamba kama kule na kulu, wale ambao ndi walikuwa deputy returning officers Wa, kati ya kumi na moja ambao waliajiriwa na kuru kumi walikuwa ametoka kwa kabila moja mmoja tu ndi walikuwa ameajiriwa kutoka Turkana wale ambao walisaidiwa kupiga kula na kwa sababu ni watu ambao wanatusikia na ni wa Kenya ni vizuri wajue kwamba hii mambo ya kufanya udaganyivu kwa kula hata Mwenyezi Mungu atakulaani we mwenyewe akina mama ambao walifanya hao na wazee Na wengine tunawajua, anajua kusoma. Anaigia kwa, kwa polling station, anasema, hajui kusoma. Lakini pio, amewaeka agents wetu kule kwa kona. Hapa anauliza swali. Mama, unataka kupigia nani kura? Kuna vya mavigi hapa, unauda na hizo zigine, unataka gani? Na mama anasema, hiyo umesema. Shalini Mwendelu, Cap TV, Nairobi. Education Cabinet Secretary George Magoha today, I was yesterday, has visited various schools in Nabubi in a bid to ensure all competence-based curriculum classes are ready and on time. Magoha has a promise that all infrastructure will be in place before he vacates office. Speaking at Muhuri Mushiri Secondary School here in Nairobi, Professor George Magoa was confident that all CBC classrooms will be completed countryward before his tenure ends, with only 15% remaining. We are at 85% plus, which means we are, we are, we are working against uh, time for 15%. Uh, most of the uncompleted classrooms are at uh, roofing or walling level. However, 
He expressed concerns of the rate of construction of the classrooms in Elgeo Market County while lauding the Nandi County government, among others, for the brilliant work done. Uh, the Rift Valley is quite large. There are uh, some counties there like Nandi that are doing extremely well. There are also others that are struggling, like uh, Elgeo Market, and uh, we, we are sure that we shall be able to, to reach our targets. Magoa was adamant that schools will complete the syllabus on time to ensure candidates have enough time for revision ahead of the national examinations. In Nairobi County, Magoa noted that the government had approved 150 standard laboratories to be used for the curriculum, further promising students with special needs that their facilities will be completed on time. Well, our special needs institutions are, are special, as, as you know, and so we are paying a little bit more attention to them. You know, we usually give, uh, even under normal circumstances, an extra 50,000 shillings to them. So we are not unduly worried. Maybe you, you are worried because you have not seen me going to, to open classrooms there. But there are ways and means by which we take uh, uh, special needs and the ways and needs by which they move from one, one uh, grade to another. With 85% of the CBC classrooms completed, Professor Magoa insists that it is now a race against time to complete the 15%. Ian Keitani, Look Up TV, Nairobi. Chimelele, Member of Parliament elect Didmas Baraza has denied charges of shooting Bran Alunga on election day. The Member of Parliament has been released on a bail of a 10 million Kenyan shillings. Kimilili MP elect Didmas Baraza has been released on a 10 million shillings bond in a murder case where he is being embroiled in shooting dead an aide to his competitor, Brian Kaemba of DAP Kenya Party at a polling station in Bungoma. The autopsy revealed that the aide, Mr. Brian Olunga, succumbed to excessive bleeding after he was shot at a close range on the head. The deceased has been buried in Malava constituency. <laughs> Meanwhile in Bungoma, police have launched investigations on the bizarre murder of a resident of Blue Waves. The body of the lady was found covered in several blankets, decaying in her house. We have a report from Mshangao. We have been working with the same time. 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 We have been According to the eyewitnesses, it is the stench from the allegedly butchered body in the house that alerted the neighbors. Nikuwa nimekuja town ya Sibui, nikaona watu wa mecha, ele kandi opposite, nika shanga shida ni nini, ikapiti nisimamise pikipiki yangu na nifike mali hapo. Fide nilifika mali hapo, nikaona mutu amewawa kwa kwa nyumba, kuenda kuangalia ni mutu mwenye mina jua. Anatoka tu nyumbani kwetu na ngwe na ikapiti nikikia watu wa nyumbani simu kapiti nikikia majarani simu ili wafike mahali hapo ili tuone yenye naendelea hatutui aliwao kwa nini kwa sababu ameshinjwa kama ngombe na hatuchachua kwa sababu ya hiyo ndiye alifanya sababu ndiyo kamua kwa sababu majarani wa hiyo boma awako kila mwa landlord pia yeye ayuko Mudeunda lana look up tv Police in Arthur River are holding a 40-year-old man who allegedly allowed his nine-year-old son to drive along Mombasa Road. Now, traffic police officers controlling traffic along Mombasa Road noticed the minor driving a saloon car in a full school uniform, but it was uh, flagged down and accelerated towards Arthur River Township. According to the police report, the police officers manning traffic along Mombasa Road Noticed the minor driving a saloon in full school uniform, but when he was flagged down, he accelerated towards Earth River Township. Police pursued the vehicle and it was impounded before entering into a private school in Earth River, 
where the two miners school. Kwanza ndalikuwa anaendesha gari. Sasa tukakutana na askari akiendesha gari. Na nikasimamisha. A man suspected to be the kid's father was later apprehended and taken to Earth River police station accompanied by the two miners for further interrogation. Na kwanga na kwanga kuna control. Well na I'm like his con driver. So if anything happens I'm there to assist. Yeah. And in further questioning, he alleges that his son is a fast driver and he has been driving for the last two years. At the river police boss Mary Njoki has cautioned parents against allowing other children to drive vehicles, saying it endangers other motorists and it's contrary to the Traffic Act. Yes, parents should not allow their underage children to, to drive vehicles. It is against the law. The law requires that one get a license and a license is issued to anyone of the age of 18 years and above. Wakati unapo mpea mtoto gari ya liendeshe, unatarisha maisha yake mwenyewe na maisha ya wengine barabarani. Kwa hivyo, ninashauri wazazi wetu wasiwaruhusu watoto wao kuendesha magari kama hawaji kuni miaka inayo ruhusiwa na serikali. Two years. Raining driving from seven to nine. Gotta be careful. Now, George Wajakoya is a running mate, Justina Mumai, has said she won't honor the summon to appear before the disciplinary committee of her conduct. Speaking of Ruby, Wamai's spokesperson stated that Justina has not gone against any rules of the party, thus she did not deserve any punishment. But for the public, there was this letter that was issued by Roots Party inviting Justina for a disciplinary uh, because allegedly she had made media utterances uh, that were not in line with the party's constitution. Uh, but here they are saying that she acknowledged the victory of a competitor via a tweet. The difference between her acknowledging via a tweet and Professor Wajakoya congratulating the winner in Bomas and everyone saw this. There are videos all over. He shook hands with the president-elect William Ruto. So he was the first one to congratulate the president-elect on his victory. Now the only difference between Professor Wajakoya and, uh, and, 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 and Justina was Justina acknowledged via a tweet. Now they are calling it a disciplinary action of which now we have said that we are not going to allow that one. But we, we, we began noticing some, some funny things. For example, you wouldn't believe, but um, the, the, the manifesto launch was paid by, by Azimio. Now that's where now things started falling apart. We never knew we were a project until we, not, we, we realized that the, mani, the, the, the launch of manifesto had been paid by Azimio. To be put side by side, by uh, his excellence, the president elect, to frustrate his campaign. Now, we'll be joining our reporter, Henry Tende, later on in this broadcast, who is at the Kenyatta International Conference Center. What we do understand is that uh, the governor for Nabobi, Johnson Sakaja, will be sworn into office today, later on, Anki Dobrison Bat will be engaging with a home pretender so that we can get those live pictures from the ground on exactly what is transpiring at the Kenyatta International Conference Center. For us, we'll be calling it um, done then from the news desk right here on a look up TV's morning drift. We take a short break once we come back. Anki Dobrison Bat will be taking over the conversation all the way up to, up to 11. I'll be coming back at 11 so that we can talk about business. Top of that, let's make sense of why KQ 
is smacking those losses that it's smacking with also banks saying we are not going to pay dividends that's interim dividends despite the profits that we've sent my name is Elijah Charles Kiang. I'll see you shortly after I get over some bat.
guys, welcome back. You are still watching The Morning Drift. And right about now, we want to give you the real deal of what's going down today, calling it a new dawn for the counties, as the judiciary has been preparing to elect, uh, to of course, we're in the 45 elected governors today, which is Thursday. And of course, minus the two out of the 47, because we still are looking forward to the elections in those, in those respective counties to be done on Monday. But right now, Henry Tender is at the KICC just to give us a glimpse of what exactly is going on there as far as the swearing in of Nairobi which is the capital city of Kenya uh, and of course Nairobi County uh, that is uh, uh, governor-elect Sakaja as uh, uh, inauguration uh, Henry Tender live at KICC where the preparations for the swearing in of governor-elect governor Johnson Sakaja is ongoing as you can see behind me the stage is set just when he walks in anytime from now the event will officially kick off and the process of swearing him in will start officially as uh, we walked in today in the morning we witnessed high level of security the place is well secured just to make sure this uh, program goes on uninterrupted uh, we have seen a, a place set aside for residents of Nairobi to come in and witness the swearing in of their governor. Remember this event is happening across 45 counties in the entire uh, uh, country where the um, stage is set for the swearing in of all the 45 uh, governors elect to take over mantle for the next five years and lead uh, development in their various uh, respective counties. So we are here at the uh, uh, International uh, Kenyatta International Conference Center where the event is uh, unfolding and we are keeping tabs on what is happening immediately. The governor-elect walks in, uh, the process will start and we shall follow that process live and hear the speech of what he intends to do for the residents of Nairobi as he takes over power from the ongoing uh, NMS. Um, there was a confusion of NMS and uh, the uh, uh, governor uh, of that time uh, Mr. Sonko, but right now we are hoping perhaps we will have a clear direction on what will happen in regards to uh, the outgoing NMS and uh, that, that, that assignment of agreement that uh, actually um, made things work that way. But right now, as you can see, the stage is set and everything is happening according to plan. Uh, the security is uh, tight. Everything uh, now, right now, there is a direction being given behind me uh, just to make sure everyone is where he's supposed to be so that when the governor elect comes in this process of uh, swearing in will start officially so we are keeping tabs not much is happening apart from uh, entertainment that is ongoing and uh, the pre preparations everything being put in place to make sure the exercise is undertaken in a smooth manner we are keeping tabs on that and any time from now as we are being directed governor elect will walk in and the process will start officially. We will be streaming that uh, process live from this uh, end so that our viewers who are glued on Look Up TV can follow uh, uh, every detail as they unfold. Back to you in studio. All right, now with that, of course, happening at the KICC, just to bring you up to speed again, this very morning right here on the morning drift, we'll be looking at what then we expect from these particular governors who are going to be sworn in today, 45 of them as far as health is concerned, because well, health and politics somehow do go together, but how is it in your county? Even as we begin now, the judiciary has been preparing and is preparing in the to, of course, we're in the 45 elected governors today, Thursday, in line with provisions of assumption of the Office of Governor Act 2012. The act requires that governors elect be sworn in on the first Thursday after the 10th day following the declaration of the final results by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC. That is, the first Thursday after 10 days since the IEBC 
declared the governor as having won the election. Now, the law states that the swearing-in of the governor-elect shall occur in a public ceremony before a high court judge. The judiciary has appointed 47 judges to preside over the swearing-in of newly elected county chiefs. And even as we continue... The IABC has postponed gubernatorial elections for Kakamega and Bungoma counties, and the oath of or affirmation by the governors will take place not earlier than 10 a.m. and not later than 2 p.m. I want us to go deeper into the assumption of the Office of Governor Act 2019 that provides for the formation of a special transition committee to spearhead the process of handing over power in the counties. Now, during the swearing-in ceremony, the governor-elect and his or her deputy will take and subscribe to the oath or affirmation of office as prescribed in the first schedule section of the assumption of office of governor act 2019 upon that the of course subscribing to that oath or affirmation the governor shall sign a certificate of the inauguration in the presence of the high court judge who conducts the swearing in ceremony now given that power what do you expect from the governors as far as health is concerned? Health is now devolved, but a lot of Kenyans then say, I have to walk too far. I have to actually move to a different county. I have to be referred this far. I have to go into a private pharmacy when I have been referred from the government hospitals to actually purchase drug, which might then be double the price that I can afford. As far as health is concerned, what is the Governor Health Agenda 2022? Dr. Anbaganatra has joined me this morning. Thank you very much for creating time to be here. Thank you so much for having me over. A lot of people just think it's a matter of politics, infrastructure, corruption. Now we're looking at Supreme Court. What would be your opening remarks this morning, even as we're looking at the current developments in counties and as far as health is concerned as we begin? Um, so for my opening remarks, I would say that we are in a very good space. Um, we have the governors being sworn in today. And uh, majority of the governors and even the national leaders, when they were uh, uh, going about uh, campaigning, were discussing health as an agenda. Mm -hmm. They had health as part of their political manifestos. And that's a good space because it means the people who actually are part of decision making mm -hmm. are recognizing the need to focus on health. And in as much as we may say that those were just political promises, um, it has created an awareness mm -hmm. amongst us, amongst mm -hmm. our people, and that means now we have something to look forward to. Yeah. Oh, we have something to look forward yes. to, and I like yeah. when you said that when yeah. someone would ask them, what is the context of health in Kenya? Because really, health mm -hmm. could be wide. Mm -hmm. Last time you were here, we were talking about oral health mm -hmm. as a matter of seriousness and urgency. Yes. But if I would ask really, what is the context of health in Kenya today? Mm -hmm. So um, Kenya um, is currently... Um, on a journey towards universal health coverage. In 2017, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta had an ambitious plan for universal health coverage, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we, are, um, we have embarked on that journey. Of course, it's not a switch, a magic switch that you know, okay, we will achieve it overnight. Yes. It's, it takes a long time, so that's the context we are in. And um, in 2013, health was devolved to exactly. the 47 governments, uh, county governments. So ideally, uh, devolution was envisaged to bring healthcare closer to the people, right? So the idea of devolution was meant to reduce the historical injustices or inequalities that had happened because of colonization and then the single party rule. So devolution was meant to reduce the inequality. Mm -hmm. So the current health context is health is devolved to the 47 county governments and um, that means each governor has the mandate to plan what he will do for his people for health yeah so that's where we are at um, in terms of universal health coverage we are um, at 50 percent I would say yeah okay. that's what the uh, WHO uh, has uh, given as an index of so we're st we still have 50 percent more to go Basically, um, health is not accessible to Kenyans. At least 80% of Kenyans don't have access to health, like you said. Health is hard to make. Yes. yes. Um, we have to walk for long distances. Mm -hmm. We have to be referred to major cities for health care. Um, we have to pay for, out of, um, for health care services. In as much as we want it to be free at the point of service, 
majority of Kenyans have to pay for it. So that's the overall context, and mm -hmm. I think we'll get into it as we go along. Yeah. We're actually going to go deeper into, yes. you mentioned equity, yes. and most of the times we talk about equity and you know having these resources reach every region and every yes. county. Mm -hmm. You do realize there are disparities as far as regions are concerned, counties are concerned. Yes. We're going to be coming to that, and even before we actually watch Mm -hmm. uh, you know, videos. We went on location to actually ask okay. Kenyans about what we're talking about today. And they had different, you know, reactions and had different responses. And we'll be playing that shortly as we begin. Mm -hmm. But one of the key things that you've touched on really is that devolution was, invas uh, you know, was to bring, yes. you know, the service closer to people. But as we're looking at devolution right now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, would you say then that it has brought equity uh, in terms of accessing healthcare today? Okay, so uh, research has shown that it has improved it to improved. a certain level, yes, because um, what we noticed was that the central region of Kenya, Rift Valley region, the Nairobi counties had more developments, not only in terms of health, but overall, that was what was um, there before devolution. So devolution mm -hmm. did improve equity, but again, that was governor dependent, because what happens is each county receives an allocation right and some counties based on the marginalization of yes. the county received an equity fund as well so now depending on the governor's priorities and how he prioritized those resources then only could we achieve equity so yes it has improved it to a certain level but there still exists in mm. inequity we cannot say it happened, it happened. It's, it's just been two terms of devolution. And within the counties itself, there's still inequity. Because, yeah. for example, governors or politi uh, political leaders uh, give more preference to their regions or regions that voted for them. Or they, they um, for example, invest in uh, vote-worthy investments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in areas where they come from. So it's still going to take time to achieve equity overall. So what we're seeing is yes. barriers like nepotism, tribalism yes. still poking, uh, yes. you know, it's not if I would say that, on trying to actually achieve the government's health agenda. Yes. And that is actually, you said, still fully uh, on the governor. Not, well, not the of, governor, I would say. So of course how, he's, how, how does yeah. this? So, wait, well, he has to, the governor elect has to have a team that okay. let, um, leads this various sectors, agriculture, infrastructure, health. So when it comes to health, we have the CEC of health, we have the chief exactly. officer of health. So some of these positions are sometimes, um, as you said, uh, plagued with nepotism, right? And um, it's very important as governors go into office mm. now that they choose the right leaders for these positions because they will guide you to achieve the agenda for your county. The, your county is your, uh, you know, platform to improve health for people, agriculture, everything. So make sure you choose leaders who are qualified, no, right. who have a vision, the same vision that you do. And it's not necessary that you go and change the leadership that was already there because we already have chief officers of health. We already have CEC health. It doesn't mean that if you're a new governor, you come in and change that because okay. that leads to discontinuity, right? But just um, have an assessment and mm -hmm. have a plan and have a good team of leaders who will help you take your agenda forward, yes. And I like that you say they need a good team behind yes. them, yes. the ones with the same vision for health. Yes. And one of the things that you really touched on was the prioritizing yes. aspect. Yes. Do they prioritize health? Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at what Kenyans had to say when we went out there to ask them what they expect mm -hmm. uh, of the new governors as they come into power, mm -hmm. as far as that quality healthcare access is concerned. Here is what they had to say. All right, now I want to apologize for that very small hitch. That video should be coming to you shortly as Kenyans were out there saying, we do expect this from that governor. We expect this continues. We expect this is made better. And even as we're speaking of this really, Daktari, uh, we want to understand then when, when actually people say, why do we say that health is political and should it even be political? Because some would say, if you bring in politics into matters health, you might you know, deteriorate some of these you know, systems or mechanisms that should be working. Like you said, nepotism, stuff like that come into play. And you know, politics can be very complex. But 
Why would we say then that health is politics and should it be political? Okay, so health is a right. Health, yes. uh, access to health is a right, and according to the Kenya Constitution, Article 40, 43, it is the right of every Kenyan citizen to achieve the highest attainable health care, right? Mm -hmm. Health. Um, so that means health should not be political. Okay. Yeah. But okay. unfortunately, even globally, health is political because the decision makers are politicians, are leaders. So um, health is somehow um, in a basket of all other sectors and uh, polit polit political leaders or the leaders of a country or global leaders make decisions on health based on prioritization. Like, so we have to fo focus on infrastructure, we have to focus mm -hmm. on all aspects, tourism, everything. So health is part of that huge basket and a, a leader comes in and has to prioritize the limited resources that we have. Yes. And um, that's what makes uh, health political. Okay. All the policies that are, for example, drafted, implemented, it depends on the political um, leader at that time yes. and his interests. So unfortunately, health is political and it's about time that we as health workers realize that and get into the political space because otherwise we'll be continuously left behind. Yes. And, and now we're looking at a president-elect as mm -hmm. much as there is the, you know, the, the filing, the nine presidential petitions. Let's just talk about what it is like, you know, with, with, the, with Rutos, mm -hmm. you know, uh, political yet yeah. health, you know, manifesto. Yeah. You picked from it. What do you think of it if you'd pick, you know, Ruto and among other you know governors we're seeing today yeah. as well coming out to just talk about health quite positively yes, yes. Um, I would say that the first thing that comes out of the manifesto is that it talks about the bottom-up approach which is uh, great because if we look at it that's what devolution is meant to do right to reach healthcare at right from the, the bottom grassroots. the grassroots to the top and uh, what's very impressive is not only uh, Ruto's manifesto a lot of manifestos are talking about community health strategy primary health care and that that is what we need to focus on because without primary health care there's no universal health care uh, primary health care means that every person is able to access um, quality health care at the grassroots mm -hmm. and it's not only about curative but also about prevention, promotion, how people live. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, that's what a lot of governors have spoken about. It's very impressive. I was watching uh, the, uh, Nairobi Governor Sakaja talking about community health strategy and uh, even um, a lot of people have been talking about uh, Professor Nyang Nyongo has already strengthened primary health care. Mm -hmm. So that's very impressive, I would say. And um, with the, the UDA Kwanzaa manifesto, they spoke about um, strengthening primary health care. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They spoke about strengthening community health um, workers, converting them into community health workers and not volunteers. Because mm -hmm. as we speak, most of the counties have community health volunteers. That means they're not paid. Yes. So what is their motivation to continue working? Can yeah. we hold it at that? Yeah. They're not paid. What is their motivation to mm -hmm. continue working? And in the past, we've seen historically yeah. doctors down their tools, nurses down their tools. And, mm -hmm. and when this happens, who really hurts? You know, mm -hmm. we've seen people bank around saying, we need our doctors back. We need them, you know, remunerated properly. We need them respected. We need decent pay for this. We need motivation for these people. Yeah. We're just going to take a short breather. But even as we continue, the KICC is eventful today as we await the inauguration and swearing in of Sakaja, who is the incoming governor for Nairobi County. Henry Tender will keep updating us. So if you do see that on screen, just know that that is live from the KICC in Nairobi. But I take a short breather here as we discuss politics and health. And as we do, please celebrate your incoming governor. What do you expect from them? In the comment section, use the hashtag The Morning Drift. We'll be right back. Don't
Welcome back and thank you very much for choosing to stay with us. This is a loop app TV. Well, it's a new dawn for the counties as we are seeing, uh, you know, different and that is 45 governors elect just yet to be sworn in by the judiciary. Very eventful as we are seeing even on the screen, uh, you know, Honorable Sakaja being celebrated by, you know, different Kenyans there just that I, I believe in those are Nairobians very excited about him getting into office it's quite a day for different counties and with that is on the split screen you can see uh, that Nairobi quite early by 10 29 a number of Nairobians a lot of Kenyans just there celebrating his win and yet to actually you know witness his inauguration I can see its pomp its color it's celebrations, but even as they get into office, we are asking, have they considered a plan? You know, we're talking about the governor health agenda. Have they considered a plan? Is it realistic? And of course, there are manifestos. There are beautiful manifestos. Sakaja himself stood out on, of course, his concern on health care and what is yet to do for the people of Nairobi County. And I'm here with Daktari, who is also very passionate. Daktari, the pictures we're seeing on air is an excitement lot of mm -hmm. Kenyans. True. Excited people ready to actually see what Sakaja has for them. But we picked something that he said on Matters Health that you are equally excited about when yes. you walked in. We yeah. want to touch on that as well, even yeah. as we are yet to witness his official, uh, you know, swearing in. Yeah. So uh, first of all, I'd like to say that um, uh, Sakaja, Honorable Sakaja, is actually very lucky because he is, he's inheriting work that was done by NMS. Mm -hmm. um, he's inheriting an uh, infrastructure that was built, about 24 new hospitals, I mean, not hospitals, but dispensaries and health centers were built all around Nairobi. So he's inheriting at least infrastructure. And he himself said that he understands health is not just a hospital. Health is about the services within the hospital, the workers within the hospital, hospital and what we provided. So um, he has that platform and uh, what I'd like to see him do is for example mm -hmm. have a gatekeeper mechanism of ref ref referrals because um, we've had, which it has, it's already happened, okay. Kenyatta National Hospital was very crowded, there was long waiting lines, we had Mama Lucy Kibaki, Pomwani and when they built these uh, dispensaries and health centers, about 24 of them around Nairobi, it reduced the burden on the major hospitals. So um, um, this is a great platform for him to mm -hmm. work on primary health, mm -hmm. work on prevention, early detection of diseases. So focus on improving the human resource at the lower level dispensaries and health centers so that people can go there without having to pay any user fees because nobody is supposed to pay for services at the level two and level three facilities. So even if you're suffering from a slight um, cold or something, mm -hmm. it, you're not barred from visiting the mm -hmm. clinic or dispensary. And only when, if it's a major problem that can't be sorted at that level, you refer to the higher level. So that's something that we hope to see Nairobi take up and then the other counties can then copy because that's what will, for example, reduce costs on healthcare. Yes. Because yes. currently, yeah, because currently what happens is when you're unwell, you go directly to the higher level of uh, hospitals, there's long waiting lines, you see a specialist rather than seeing a GP or a family physician or a clinical officer. So yeah, that, that's what I'm excited about. Okay. And I, after watching him, I realized that he has that mindset mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so yeah i like when you say he has that yeah. mindset yes he does. So, so it's very important also that governors speak a particular type of mindset yes. because we we're going to be talking about different governors as well i know yeah. what we're seeing is you know different governors coming out to say uh, you know specific things about health and simba arati yes. stood out you know he's been trending this morning kisi mm -hmm. county yeah. and you know the inauguration is budgeted for about 57 million there about mm -hmm. i believe yes. and simba arati is trending for saying i will not use that amount of money for holding a bible i'm going to be reducing that to 3.5 yeah. million why he says Kisi County doesn't have medicine in hospitals and dispensaries. What would you pick from that mindset? Because really, that is, that is outstanding. It is very outstanding, and it's a matter of prioritization. So um, we are a resource-limited country, right? We, we don't have enough resources. So the resources that we have, mm. how are we going to prioritize it? Mm. Yes, this is one event where he has chosen to prioritize health yes. over, you know, uh, pomp affair. But... Um, 
what are we going to do for the next five years? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many things in your basket when, you, when you're in that office. What are you going to prioritize in? And are you going to prioritize in health? Um, it's been shown that country, counties that prioritize in health mm -hmm. actually advance economically as well. Wow. Yes. Good relation. Yes. So it's a healthy nation is a working nation. Exactly. Yeah. And if your if your county is working, if people are able to access healthcare services, if they don't have to spend so much time out of work to seek healthcare services, that county naturally grows. And if you if you look at, um, for example, Eldoret, how that county um, grew, mm. right? How the city has grown. It, it has gr grown as a hub because of medic medical. A, what do I say? A center of medicine. There's a there's a school of medicine. There's mm -hmm. a hospital. So it's grown. And and I'm going to interject, yeah. but it has grown so much. Yes. You call it a city. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean. But you were able to pick yes. that kind of development. Yes. Yes. So uh, if you can focus on improving that and make your county a hub a, a hub for a special uh, like um a center of specialization for a certain disease for example mm -hmm. like a cancer center or something of that sort you will naturally grow your county right Beautiful. economically the value everything the quality of life of the people will improve so yeah, yeah. yeah. and quality of life that's why you're actually on yeah. that seat you need to improve yes. the quality of life yeah. and now we've just picked on Sakaja and Simbarati yeah. but like Kipra is doing something yes um, and and reinstating the number of doctors what does this mean to the healthcare uh -huh. you know sector in that particular county and now we're just picking out the yeah. the, the governors who have come out outrightly and said I am very intentional yes. about the healthcare center so, um, like Ipia, um, like some of the problems that we had in devolution, and yes. I would like to bring that up, is each governor had their way of dealing with healthcare workers, and unfortunately, in like Ipia, healthcare workers were dismissed. And even though we had um, them, you know, we had court cases and we won those court cases. I mean, you can <laughs> be in contempt of court. So Irungu, Honorable Irungu, when he yes. came in, he reinstated, he's reinstating those doctors. And as we speak today, there's a return to work formula for those doctors. Amazing. Yes. I want us to just hold that thought yeah. right there. We're celebrating these amazing governors. Yeah. And for like, keep your things just about to turn around. Yes. But because it's a big day, even for Nairobi County, let's cross over quickly to the live event at the KICC mm -hmm. as we look forward to the official swearing in of the incoming governor that is Josun Sakaja right now Henry Tende live from the KICC wendo ule utupatia inchi hii wendo ndo ulipatia mji huu tuakomba mnyezi mungu kwa iza yako na rahima yako wakabithi viongozi ya wetu nguvu kama ulivyo mkabithi na bisuleimani na hikma mkabidhi wakabidhi hikma na maarifa kama ulivyo mkabidhi na Bisuleiman na wakabidhi usawa na utendaji haki kama ulivyo ulivyomjalia mtume wetu Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya rabbi sisi ni waja wako viumbe vyako tutengenezee mji wetu uwe ni mji wa matendo na baraka na matunda ya fanaka ya allahu ya aziz ya ghafar bi rahmatika ya rahman rahim ya jabar ya dhal quwwati al majtin يا رحمن الرحيمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين. أسنت سانا أستاذ حسن علي. Let me invite um, BAPS to come. Oh, there you are, right? Okay. Uh, namaste, brothers and sisters. I, Engineer Kamal Gupta, pray on behalf of entire Hindu community for our great leadership. Om Bhur Bhuvah Soha. तत्सवितुर्वरेनियम भर्गो देवस्य धीमहि दियो यो नह प्रचोदयात ओ गॉड द प्रेटर द बेसिस ऑफ ऑल लाइफ हु 